Now, since it gained independence in February 1965 from Great Britain, the Gambia has tried to assert itself as a nation. Now, from the onset, the country's first leader, Sardauda Kairabai Jawara, laid a strong foundation by opening the country to the outside world. In this special feature, entitled Epic Moments in History, Rema Balde takes a look at the Gambia struggle independence. There are always epic moments to refer to in times like this. The Gambia's relationship with the regional bloc ECOWAS has come a long way. In 1990, the 13th session of ECOWAS was held in the Gambia. The occasion also marked the bloc's 15th anniversary. It is often said that history repeats itself. Perhaps it is true that some events of great historical significance have a certain way of recurring. I could not help recalling the euphoria and the high expectations that marked the signing of our treaty, setting up the community, exactly 15 years ago today. Your Excellency, we also recall that our community was born just after the beginning of the first major oil crisis. In addition, to the negative and disastrous effects of the oil crisis. Some member states experienced at the time the full impact of the region's longest and the most persistent drought. Few years after the attainment of independence, Sarada Karaba Jawara continued to look for development partners from some of the world's great powers. In the early 1970s, Jawara flew to France to meet President Valéry Giscard d'Etat. Within the framework of a comprehensive development master plan, Jawara was looking forward to initiating numerous development projects. If I may start with the economic matters, which go beyond just bilateral cooperation, um, we, we discussed uh, uh, projects, development projects, which uh, are shared between Gambia and Senegal on the Gambia River Basin uh, for the building of dams, for hydroelectricity and agriculture. Uh, irrigation and salinity control, uh, and also the um, building of a bridge across the Gambia River, uh, which uh, we call the Trans-Gambia Bridge. We discussed all this, uh, and of course we discussed the uh, uh, certain political matters uh, concerning Africa. What particular issues? On a fateful Friday, July 22nd, 1994, the country's social political history changed a democratically elected government was replaced by soldiers under the banner of the Gambia Armed Forces Provisional Ruling Council, led by then Lieutenant Yaya AJJ Jame. The council cited numerous reasons why the takeover was necessary. Chief among the reasons is rampant corruption and underdevelopment. In February 1999, history was recorded when 62 Gambian students graduated with various first degrees on home soil. That occasion heralded a new dawn towards harnessing homegrown talents. It is the first such event that we held in the Gambia since God created this country. It is the culmination of three years of hard work and determination on the part of the government St. Mary's University, and you, the graduates. On behalf of the government and the people of the Gambia, and personally as a fellow graduate of St. Mary's University. In July 2006, the African Union Summit was convened in the country. It was a turning point for not only the country's leadership, but the summit was the second time in the country's historical calendar to have recorded an impressive turnout of foreign leaders. In December 2016, for the first time in history, a coalition of eight political parties decided to team up together to challenge the incumbent, who has been in power for the past 22 years. A little-known real estate mogul, Adam Abaro, emerged as the winner, according to the results announced by the country's Independent Electoral Commission. On Friday, 28 January 2017, Yaya Jame stepped down as president following weeks of bitter wrangling after the IEC re-emerged to rectify errors that were realized at the time the election results were being tallied. 
The APRC filed a petition at the Supreme Court to challenge the results. I've been 22 years and I'm grateful to the Ghanaian people. Adam Abaro flew to Dakar for his own safety and was sworn in as president on the 19th January 2017 in line with the Gambian constitution. My message to Gambians is let us all come together. One Gambia, one people, one nation. That is our slogan. We all believe now if we are together, we can make a difference. It's because we are together, that's why we are strong to defeat the incumbent. So we want that to continue. Hands on deck, we move on and change this country together.